Disgruntled employees leak private emails and text messages to left-wing media outlets to disparage Jerry Falwell Jr.'s stewardship of Liberty University. Now in his first TV interview since the attacks, uh, Falwell tells one America's Neil McCabe his side of the story. Take a look. Jerry Falwell Jr. became the president of Liberty University in 2007, taking over the reins from his father who established the school in 1971. He told One American News that one good thing about the hit pieces in the Washington Post and Politico is that people have rallied to his defense. I've never felt so much love as I did at the football game the other night, Saturday night. They came up in the box and it was, um, it's amazing how when you're under attack, your friends become more f your friends and your enemies, they're never going to be your friends anyway. In the articles, anonymous sources accused Falwell of self-dealing and family favoritism. But I want to add, there was nothing in any of the reports that were leaked that was improper. We explained it all. We, we printed the truth and we got nothing to hide. We've, we've operated a squeaky clean organization here for decades, had clean audits, no findings in our financial aid audits, which is almost unheard of. When did you know that they were going to be gunning for you in this latest attack? I didn't know it was happening. This is all years ago, by the way. This latest attack is just them rehashing things that, that happened years ago. But they, they, they were pushed out by the board because the board saw that they were disloyal and they were um, subversive. But then we started looking at their emails because we owned the emails and we saw it was more than that. It was an attempted coup to push me out because they saw how Liberty was growing. They wanted to control it. We found out about it after we read their emails. That's when we went to law enforcement. That's when we went to the, the uh, civil, civil lawyers and uh, it's going to be quite interesting. In addition to questions about how Falwell has built up the school, there were accusations that he has suppressed free speech on campus and with the faculty. They're free to say whatever they want here. So are the faculty. It's, it's you know, they talk about it recently in the press that there was a sp uh, spirit of fear here, culture of fear. And if there ever was, it was a short time when the people who are telling lies about us and attacking us now were in charge. And so there was a certain level of incompetence, of unethical behavior, and now they're the ones attacking us because they got thrown out. They were board members, some of them, and um, they were trying to enrich themselves. And now all of a sudden they're blaming it all on us when it was, anyway, it's almost, comical because that's the way they did operate and we got rid of them. Falwell said in a way he is not surprised that going into the 2020 election cycle, the left is targeting him and Liberty University now that it is emerging as an elite institution of learning. We uh, sur survived some times that nobody thought we'd survive. We Making payroll every two weeks was a struggle. Sometimes the checks would go out and I'd, sp I'd be on the phone all weekend talking to donors and lenders, please, we need money to cover those checks when they come back Monday or Tuesday. And uh, that was the first 20 years of my career. It was just uh, restructuring debt, uh, t dealing with creditors. Um, and then all of a sudden, we hit our stride. Today, Liberty has a medical school whose graduates' rate for securing residency beats the national average. 88% of its law school graduates find employment, and they rank seventh nationally in passing bar exams. Just this year, the business school, led by former Virginia Republican Congressman Dave Bratt, opens a 78,000-square-foot building complete with a mock stock exchange trading floor. It took Harvard from 1636 to 1965 to build a $1 billion endowment. And the difference in our endowment and most endowments is our $2 billion endowment is unrestricted because it's basically retained earnings from operating like a business. Falwell said as a boy he helped his father raise money for a school that would give evangelicals not only a superior education, but a school that competes in national sports. Liberty's football team now plays in Division I football with opponents this season, such as Rutgers, BYU, and Virginia. He said his father's dream was for Liberty not to become Harvard, but to be the Baptist Notre Dame. He wanted a school that had all the, all the um, academic offerings of a major university. He wanted to model it after Notre Dame. And so I was, that was beaten to me the whole time I was growing up. I would be at the back table selling record vinyl records with sermons on them and, and uh, books and I'd have money stuck in every pocket 
and it would just be like the uh, movie Almost Famous, just going from t town to t it's like a rock group, going from town to town. But instead of music, it was talking about the new school that we were starting in Lynchburg, Virginia. Neil W. McCabe, One American News, Lynchburg, Virginia. Want to see more videos like this? Click on the link below and subscribe to One American News on YouTube and call your cable provider and kindly demand that One American News is added to your lineup. Call and subscribe today.